So I'm just wondering, such such big plants, where do you intend to get the raw materials for all of this? Right, thank you. Uh, so, you know, our raw material comes from uh, steel plants and uh, there's a lot of growth happening in the steel industry in India. So India is expected to go from about 120 million tons of steel to 300 million tons of steel, mostly through the blast furnace route. So that will lead to a lot of coke ovens being established and that will be a lot of coal, that will be a lot of coal tar availability for someone like me. Uh, Vikram, give us a sense of how this technology will work in EV batteries. Yeah. So we take coal tar, which is a complete waste of the steel plant, and we convert it into something called bulk meso coke, where we have a patented furnace design, where we're able to align the carbon elements uh, that lead to a better performance uh, in the material later on. So we make bulk meso coke, and then we graphitize it, and that's where carbon becomes graphite in the anode of the cells. So it, this is where the technology lies of how you uh, configure the carbon elements to get a better performance of the cell itself. So if you're talking longer range, faster charging, all this happens at this stage of development of the precursor material. Uh, the issue has been the infrastructure for cell manufacturers. I mean, can that be accelerated? I mean, what is needed from the government? So, uh, India is doing a good job of uh, incentivizing cell manufacturing in India. Definitely, there's a lot of adoption happening on the two-wheeler, three-wheeler front in India. And uh, while they're encouraging cell manufacturing, they're expecting the ecosystem for anode and cathode manufacturing to follow that. But uh, we have already entered the anode space, and there are a few other players looking at the cathode space. Uh, we are in talks with the government to encourage the raw material space development as well in India. So changing battery minerals to battery materials is what we want to encourage in India as the cell manufacturing establishes itself in India as well. Yeah, Vic, I'm just picking up on that. Are you getting any pushback from the banks? Are they reluctant to lend to battery manufacturers and the like here? And uh, should there be subsidies instituted by Delhi? So, so the subsidies being given by the government, right now the central government, are mostly focused towards the cell manufacturing, where they expect the cell manufacturer to localize a certain percentage in India and source locally. So the government thinks that once cell manufacturing comes, the players will follow, the ecosystem will follow them and develop in India. So there is definitely a challenge in getting financing for our projects because we are putting up factories to sell material where there's no demand in India today. But we look at ourselves as a, as a global company and we want to cater to the rest of the world. And uh, when India picks up and cell manufacturing comes to India, we'll be well positioned and have a first mover advantage. Also, the question I wanted to get to is, you know, it's a battery manufacturing capability, which is in its nascency, to be perfectly frank with you. Uh, can you compete with the rest of the world? Can you compete with China on price, for instance? So, for example, today we are selling our material to China and Japan. Um, I think because we are so backward integrated to coal tar, we can be cost competitive. But it's not only about a matter of price, it's also your ESG roadmap and how you manufacture these materials. And that's, I think, where Europe and US play a big part because they're looking for responsible sources that can cater to the demand and the growing giga factories uh, in Europe and US. So it's, while, we're, while price is very, very important because the sell price is coming down, it's also very important how you manufacture these materials. And that's a real key focus area for what we are doing here. Um. Looking at the timeline for battery and EV adoption in India, give us a sense of how you see that and uh, tell us about how, you, you know, this really does take off given adoption in India has been notoriously slow. So adoption is taking time in India. Definitely there's a pickup in two-wheeler and three-wheeler adoption in India. Uh, I think in the next three or four years, uh, there'll be a gradual increment in uh, adoption, and then there'll be an exponential uh, adoption in India. We already see a huge demand for battery packs in India. So definitely all these two-wheeler, three-wheeler companies that are setting up in India are looking for battery packs, but the cells are still being imported from, from China mainly. 
So as the battery pack industry grows, I think uh, somebody will come and uh, you know, set up a cell factory here. And we are in talks with various companies that are planning to bid for the government uh, subsidy scheme uh, and are looking for local sources for raw material. So I think, uh, I think three or four years will be a little slow adoption, but after that, it will be exponential. Uh, Vikram, we're seeing a resurgence of virus cases in India. Could that put a lid on your factory plans as, you know, rural workers go back to the villages? Yeah, it's, it's really unfortunate what's happening, but our factory is located uh, within India's biggest steel plant, and we've been taking a lot of precautions for the last 14 months. We run, we operate people in various shifts. We've reduced the manpower coming. Uh, we have very strict guidelines on, you know, COVID guidelines at our factory. So we are hoping that uh, we can get through the storm and uh, come up on the other end. Right. Okay. Well, let's have a look at uh, the four-wheeler side of things. How is that working out? Are you getting any uh, foreign companies, perhaps such as Tesla, who are interested in setting up there and uh, perhaps using your batteries to begin with? And of course, they probably end up making their own. And uh, what about some of the other OEMs? So I think on the four-wheeler side, uh, nobody is really moving that aggressively to manufacture batteries or cells in India. Uh, I think Mahindra is the only company that's putting in some money to set up a battery pack assembly plant. More of the traction is on the two-wheeler and three-wheeler side and the, and the public transport. So you see a lot of, uh, lot of tenders and a lot of requirements coming for electric buses as well. Also, it's going to take time to set up charging infrastructure. So when you have two-wheeler and three-wheeler, most of the people can charge the vehicle of uh, the battery in their own house conveniently. But if you have a four uh, a four wheel car, then you really need that charging infrastructure, which is which is growing in India, but it's going to take time to get everywhere. Uh, Vikram, uh, still uh, there's been a shortage of uh, oxygen, and uh, there's been a request from the government to to cut down uh, the uses of oxygen. I mean, has there been a request uh, from the government for you? So all the steel companies in India are supporting the government right now and you know moving some of their production to help uh, local state governments. So we've seen that in the last one week of uh, everybody stepping in and supplying close to 100 tons a day of uh, oxygen to local governments and hospitals. So yeah, everybody's uh, chipping in and doing the best they can in India.